If you're looking to add a forever friend to your family, we have a great option for you. He's right here eating treats. <laughs> yes. and we're not talking about me. Joining us in today's Forever Family from the Champaign County Humane Society, we have Animal Behavior Specialist and Volunteer Coordinator, Brian Tabbert, hanging out with us. And Xerxes? Yes, Xerxes. Tell us about him. Yeah, so Xerxes is a 10-year-old um, male. He's supposed to be a bull mastiff, bull terrier mix. Uh, brought to the shelter because his previous family was moving to a new state, couldn't bring these large guys with him. Um, so we're just trying to find him a new home. He's the biggest snuggle bug. We think he looks like a little piglet. <laughs> he uh, looks like a little bit like a baby. <laughs> He's Hi. never hey, been in his life, oh, but does great hello. with kids of all ages. Oh, thank you. Um, we do think in his older age, he might do best as like the only pet in the home, kind of slowing down. Not big on puppies jumping around him, yeah. but a really easygoing guy for he the most part. He does <laughs> seem to enjoy uh, looking out the window because we've got some monitors on the other side of the uh, <laughs> studio that appear to be windows, and he was very interested in those. Yes, even at 10, he will, you'll get your exercise in walking this guy around. Well, <laughs> he is not a super him. big couch potato. Tell me a little bit about your role there at the Humane Society. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm the behavior specialist as well as the volunteer coordinator um, throughout COVID. The second half has not been super great, but I uh, train all the volunteers that come through with the as different things that we have people be able to come out with, like dog walking, cat kennel cleaning, um, off-site events like furball or mud strut when we have those as well. And then the other side of my job is helping people in the public that have questions about their pet behavior. So either animals that were adopted from us, that they're having a little trouble helping them acclimate to their home, um, or even people that just have questions that they have a pet and they want to know what's going on. At, at first, I wondered if you were doing the behavior for like the, the employees, <laughs> for, for the actual hey, animals. It works. I'm training works <laughs> for the animals. Positive reinforcement is a, is a strong tool. I'm sure if you brought treats for them, they would yes. uh, whip into shape in no time. Yes. Yes. Um, would you say, is there one overarching thing when it comes to the behavior of your pet that people don't recognize or realize or something you start with um, typically? That's a great question. I think part of it is just that what they meet at the shelter may not be what they see at home. Someone that was really outgoing at the shelter, maybe is a little shyer, uh, and just helping them make sure that they take a lot of time when they're building that relationship with them and talking a lot about positive reinforcement and keeping that relationship really, that it's really great that they get to hang out with you. Um, I think people have the best of intentions, but they kind of rush into things and uh, even us, when we're thrown into new environments, we're kind of like, whoa, let me take a step back. Let me see what's going on and that these yeah. guys can need that as well, even though we are very happy to find them new homes. Now, you mentioned he would probably do best in a house without any other dogs, but there are other families out there who have pets already, dogs sure. or cats, and you've got some tips or some things that people need to be mindful of when maybe bringing in another new animal. Yeah. What do we need to be concerned? Of. Sure. So we definitely want to see, uh, we want to know whether or not the other animal does actually want a new friend in the home. I think some people, sometimes the people want the pet a little bit more than that. So we actually do dog introductions at the shelter for people that are interested to kind of let them see a little speed dating, a little blind date, if you will, <laughs> yep, for the dogs. Um, as far as cats go, slow and steady. Uh, cats are very, oh, I'm so oh, sorry. Right. Oh, very particular. Hello. Uh, very easy to help them acclimate to one another, but that it can just take a little bit longer than people think. Yeah. I can't take you home, but I would like to. <laughs> oh I can't, my and you would lick and my face. And it's a commitment. Face. It can definitely be um, a work in progress to help these guys acclimate well to one another. Yeah. What is the process for adoption if someone sees Xerxes here and climbing all over <laughs> me and goes, I want that dog yeah. in my house? Of course. So step one is going to be to come out to the shelter. Our open hours are Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. or Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Come out, visit with him in person. We're going to have you fill out an application, a paper application, right there. Go over a couple of questions with you, and then we start processing that. It usually takes us about 24 to 72 hours to process, and we keep you up to date um, every step of the way because we, we want to send these guys home as quickly as we can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure the perfect family out there is watching right now thinking he would make a great addition um, to their forever family. He has a kisser because uh, my well, arm's a little damp. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit much. <laughs> it's okay. I don't mind. No. Well, hopefully you can take a look at the Humane Society's Facebook page right there, um, which we will link up on our Facebook page.